Hey everyone, this is Baphmetrics, and welcome to episode 15 of Grid School for Bitwig 3.0. We're still in the middle of our episodes about phase, but now we get back into the easier stuff. We've dealt with all the really hard, confusing stuff about phase in episodes 12, 13, and 14. Uh, today I'm going to show you the difference between using transport LFOs versus using phase modules to drive the phase of things in the grid. And uh, in the next video, we're going to expand on that and talk about how to do some various tricks for doing half-time, double-time, and polyrhythms, things like that. So today's video will be really short because it's a very simple subject. And uh, as a reminder, all of the episodes in this series build upon concepts and techniques that I've explained in earlier episodes. So if you haven't yet seen uh, the full playlist for Grid School, there's a link to it in the video description, and you're probably going to want to review some of the older stuff so that everything I'm talking about today makes sense to you. So in the last video, the last episode, you know, we showed you this basic pattern for dealing with uh, sequencers that are working when you're letting the the phase free run whenever the um, audio transport is stopped. And that's usually what you want in most cases. And we showed you this, um, this pattern where we had pitches doing a kind of pitched vocal sample. And we were using this technique of a Boolean gate to keep everything quiet unless transport was running. In today's episode, we have a similar kind of situation, but this time we're using a kick drum. We're only using gates, we're not using pitches, and I've set up a slightly different way to control whether or not we hear sound. Right now you hear no sound, even though the gates are obviously running and we have a, a, a true mono voice active, and uh, there is phase coming in, but you're not going to hear anything unless I pl plus press the play transport button, and then you're going to hear the kick pattern. Now, I'm doing it a little differently in this one just to show you a slightly different, cleaner way uh, of, of triggering the kind of Boolean decision. Remember, over here, the idea was some sort of input had to be coming into a, uh, a Boolean and logic operator, and then a second thing also had to be true, which in this case was play transport running, and then that let the signal from the gates actually flow through to the envelope over here. Here we're using a different approach where instead of a Boolean gate, we're simply using a toggle element in between these two things. And toggle, I think, is part of logic. Data, where are you hiding toggle? Mix. Yeah, it's a mix element here. This is normally what it looks like, but I've turned it yellow to show that I'm kind of using it as a logic trigger. And it's literally just an on-off kind of toggle button that either lets the signal through or blocks it. Okay, so I have this toggle button, and the toggle button on off state is being controlled by this modulator. And this modulator is being controlled by whether or not transport is running. So when transport runs and this turns true, it flips this modulator on, which presses it all the way positive, which in turn goes and turns this button on. And when transport isn't playing, this toggle goes to its low state, and therefore this turns off, and that blocks the signal from the gate coming into the um, it blocks the signal from coming into the sampler and triggering the kick symbol. So why would you want to use this? Well, you know, using this approach means lots more wires, <laughs> and sometimes when you're building a complex grid device, the wires can make things a little harder to figure out and read. So this is a way to do a wireless kind of connection to some sort of gate that stops signal from going any further. And you can see that the, you know, the toggle when it's on, it sends the gates output to the trigger input of the sampler, and it also sends the gates output over here to the envelope to trigger the envelope. So on and off. Now, the gates module itself is uh, 16 beats long. Remember, you can set the, the step count of any one of the data modules by you know, using the inspector. So it's a 16th note grid, and I have the kick happening on the downbeat of every single uh, beats one, two, three, and four of the bar. So that's why we hear a four on the floor pattern right now. Now, 
What's providing the phase? We don't have a phase device here. We, we don't have this thing anywhere in the grid. And we don't have the phase precord of the gates on. So how is phase actually working here? Why is it working? Um, that's because there's another thing that can produce phase. And it's called the transport LFO. It's in the LFO section. It's right here. And transport is kind of like a miniature embedded portable phase generator. You'll notice that its main output is phase. It's a purple output port. And you'll notice that there's an offset value here, which will also be interesting and we'll talk about in a minute. But the basic idea is just like the phase device will effectively run at a length that matches the, the phase we've set for the grid device as a whole, right? So if we, want, if we want the phase to be a full bar, the start of each bar goes up to the top and then triggers again on the downbeat of the next bar, then we typically want to set this incoming phase value for the device to something that equals a bar. 16 sixteenth notes, 8 eighth notes, 4 quarter notes, 2 half notes, 1 whole note, whatever. It all works out to one bar, so the length of the phase cycle is one bar each. And that's what, you know, this input always reads the incoming device phase. It's locked to the incoming device phase. However, if you don't want to be locked to the incoming device phase and you want to have some flexibility, that's where this transport LFO comes into play because now you can independently set different phase clocks all throughout your project just by using the transport LFO. So in this case, the transport LFO is still set to 16 16th notes, which is still effectively one bar. And you can see the, the rate that this gates device is happening you can see that the phase is lasting for one whole bar. Um, but watch what happens if I change this first numerator to eight. Now, this pattern's running twice as fast. Let's set it to four. Every four sixteenth notes is now a full cycle of the phase. So it's running you know, four times as fast as normal. This is no longer the speed of a bar. If I want to slow it down, I could make it 32 second notes. And now we're effectively running at half time against the project tempo. This is taking 32 16th notes to go through its full cycle, right? So you can see that it's still generating phase, but it lets you flexibly set the phase. And so you could have different transport modules coming into your project at different places, all running at different phases, and you can mathematically decide polyrhythms and fun stuff like that. Now there's another way to do polyrhythms, but we're gonna cover that in, we're gonna cover both using the transport and using the other way, the other trick uh, for doing polyrhythms. We're gonna cover that in the next episode. Right now, I just wanted to introduce you to this transport device and what it does. Now, the last thing to know about the transport device is that you can also offset the phase from the normal cycle of the grid. If you remember in the last video, we talked about how um, the phase coming into a grid device is based on your arranger timeline and you know the bars and beats of your arranger timeline. So 16 16th notes lines up everything with you know the, the confines of each bar in the arranger timeline. Um, however, the transport allows you to offset that phase. So if I wanted to instead make this thing always start on the fourth note or rather the, the, the second beat of the pattern, the fourth sixteenth note of the pattern, I could effectively make this pattern really start where, even if I have this set here, right? It would really be starting effectively here on the timeline grid. So this is just a phase offset, kind of like we use in a lot of audio devices. It's just a way to offset the phase from where it would normally be at its zero point, and you can offset it forward or back. And you can see, even as I change this, you can see the, the position or pattern moving because I keep changing the offset. So you could do some interesting things here by maybe attaching a modulator to this offset value and constantly throwing the offset around to get some, 
strange randomness or strange resets and retiming of the, f- the pattern that you're running in a sequencer, just be aware that that's there and that's a trick you can use. And then this is just a logic output. And the way the logic output works is the first half of this phase cycle coming out of the transport, the logic is on or high, and the second half of the phase, it's off. And it's just a convenient way to maybe trigger something every time this cycle runs around to the beginning. So, for example, instead of having the phase transport, I'm sorry, the project transport playhead resetting the phase to... The beginning of things, like if this is active and the transport setting it, then even if my phase cycle is way over here, when I start transport, it's always going to flip back to the beginning, just like I showed you in the last video. See, we're always resetting the phase from the beginning every time I play transport. But you could, alternatively, have this setting where and when the reset happens. And then, for example, if I do an offset, to the eighth note in the pattern. If, if I'm not confused, it should restart here every time I restart the phase. So let's start it about here. No, no. The phase itself is offset, but the reset still affects where the data sequencer is. So sorry to confuse you with that. It is changing the phase, but the pattern of the sequencer is still being affected by the reset. But the point is, it's this now that always makes sure that wherever this is, it, it resets at the beginning, right? At the beginning of the, of the transport pattern. So that's really pretty much the basics. I wanted to show you this slightly different way of keeping things quiet unless transport was running by using this wireless technique. And I wanted to show you that this is generating phase, and it's a different way to get phase that also allows you to do some offset and possibly some interesting logic triggers. The real fun stuff's going to come in the next episode, and I'll see you for that one next time. This has been a nice short one. See you soon.